2.5%. Those were the odds of Ipswich Town getting promoted to the Premier League in the 2023-24 campaign. Just two years ago, Ipswich were a mid-table League One side, with almost nothing to show for them. But in the span of two seasons, they were able to secure back-to-back -back promotions that have become the first side in 10 years to do so at such a high level. The Tractor Boys has been completely transformed into a top side and will return to the Premier League for the first time in 20 years. So how did they accomplish this? Let's begin back to the 2021-22 campaign. For a little bit of backstory, Ipswich Town for the last 20 years or so has been a team that has been bouncing around the Championship and League One. However, following a horrific 2018-19 campaign under manager Paul Lambert, the club found themselves playing some of the worst football they have seen in history, and they are placing around mid-table in League One every season leading up to the 2021-22 campaign, with very little hope in securing promotion. Their preseason campaign, though, was absolutely horrible, with them struggling to pull any wins from some pretty beatable teams in retrospect. And you could guess that team morale was at an all-time low, and heading into the regular season, things would get worse before they would get better. Their first five fixtures came against Morecambe, Burton Albinion, Cheltenham Town, MK Dons, and AFC Wimbledon. But sadly, they came away with zero wins. Paul Lambert was struggling to implement his football philosophy, which entailed rigid structure and strong defensive shape, leaving little room for individual flair. And in modern day football, this is a huge part of the game. So having this incredible young team try and adapt to that concept would be a substantial challenge. By the January break, Lambert had only managed to accumulate a 34% win rate in the league. And so the only right idea was to sack Lambert and take on a new manager. December 16th, 2021, Kieran McKenna was appointed as the new manager for Ipswich Town. But his resume was a bit concerning. McKenna had many different jobs, most notably at the youth level. But his first proper managerial outing came with the Tottenham under-18s. But after an underwhelming stint, moved two years later to Manchester United's under-18s. And took charge as one of the assistant coaches under Jose Mourinho as well. And remained in that role for several seasons. But he never got his chance to take charge as a proper manager, even when Mourinho was sacked. He was still deemed not good enough and took on quite a bit of slander. But eventually he got his chance when he took the Ipswich job in 2021. Immediately when McKenna took charge of this underwhelming Ipswich side, his impact was felt throughout. He completely changed how Ipswich would play and it seemed to work. His first game was a win against Wickham and from there he hit the ground running. Ipswich saw an immediate upturn in their form and under McKenna, Ipswich would go 11 matches unbeaten through February and March. McKenna leveraged the best players in the squad to his advantage, turning West Burns and Macaulay Bonnet into the top scorers for the team. Overall, McKenna ended the year with 18 wins, 16 draws, and 12 losses for Ipswich, which considering the start of the year is quite good. But despite this major improvement in the team, they did not qualify for playoffs. As their sights were set on the next campaign, Kieran McKenna made some major changes to the squad. As far as his recruiting at the beginning of the season went, they made some incredibly valuable sides in the likes of Nathan Broadhead who came from Everton in search of first team football after bouncing around on different loan spells for three years in a row. And Freddie Latipo, an older player but one with lots of championship and League One experience. They also added some depth to the back with signs of Harry Clark who, similar to Broadhead, had been all over the place with loans and would finally find himself some first team football. As this new and improved team moved into preseason, things started to look up for them as they were able to beat all the teams that were of their caliber like Millwall and AFC Wimbledon. Ipswich Town started the 2022-23 year with the best form the club has seen in decades. Only one game lost in the first 10 fixtures. They crushed all of the mid-table teams, but the true test would come when they would play one of the title favorites, Sheffield Wednesday. At this point in the season, Sheffield had lost two games prior and were fourth in the table, and Ipswich were first. So taking a home win here would be very crucial in prolonging the hopes of promotion. Early on, Ipswich took the lead with a goal from Jackson, and once they had the momentum, Ipswich started to pile on the pressure. And things were starting to look like they were going their way when Sheffield conceded an own goal. But as they say, 2-0 is the most dangerous lead in football. Minutes later, Sheffield's buyers were able to find the back of the net. And sure enough, in the 82nd minute, Sheffield scored this goal to put them level. The end result being a draw. As Ipswich moved forward with their push for automatic promotion, the team was balling out. Connor Chaplin and new signing Freddie Latipo emerged as one of the brighter talents in League One. Chaplin was able to dictate play from the number 10 position and Latipo was able to finish those crucial chances he created. By around the middle of the season, the club found themselves hovering around second place, just a few points behind Plymouth Argyle in first. The rest of their fixtures for the season contained a few huge obstacles that they would have to overcome in order to gain promotion. Those obstacles were of course Plymouth Argyle at home and Sheffield Wednesday at home again. These two matches would ultimately dictate who would get to go to the championship next season and who would have to fight it out in playoff. First, they had to worry about Plymouth. They had been beaten earlier in the season away, so they had the advantage going into match day 26. From the first whistle, it was back and forth. Both teams had some really good chances and the game could have gone either way, but Ipswich would have the upper hand in the 63rd minute after Burns was laid off from across and smashed it into the roof of the goal. 
but Plymouth never gave up, and in the 90th plus three, Manly Bumba took no prisoners, whipping one into the top corner. He leveled the game and they ended up sharing the points, which was not the result Ipswich were wanting. A month later, they had to take on Sheffield Wednesday for the second time, and this match was going to be tough and a detrimental one for the title push. Early on from the first whistle, Ipswich took to Sheffield and left them no breathing room, and in the 19th minute were able to draw a penalty, and up stepped Connor Chaplin for Ipswich. It felt like slow motion when he struck it down the middle, only to have it saved. From here, Sheffield had the momentum and would score 10 minutes later, making the title push look like a defeat when they doubled their lead heading into the end of the first half. But Ipswich would make their first breakthrough in the 40th plus 3 with a great finish from Broadhead in his first goal of the season. From the second whistle, Ipswich had all the motion and would level the score in the 51st minute with a Davis goal. With everyone behind Ipswich, they started to pepper the Sheffield goal but struggled to find the back of the net until the full-time whistle. Two draws in two very important matches. They did not leave themselves much breathing room for promotion. The next 10 matches they did not lose, and this promotion was very much within their grasp. Fast forward to match day 45, Ipswich played Exeter City at home. With promotion on the line, they did not hold back. They fired five goals to Exeter City in the first 32 minutes, and by halftime, everyone knew they had sealed promotion, and the celebration at Pullman Road ensued. This first season was a huge success, and McKenna engineered some of Ipswich players into the most unlikely stars. Connor Chaplin historically hasn't had a flash to career, but he won two Player of the Month awards and a Golden Boot that season. Christian Walton won the Golden Glove, and McKenna got Manager of the Season. Lot to celebrate for the 2022-23 campaign, but there would be some major changes in the following year. Just before preseason, Ipswich was given a windfall of cash from a U.S. investment firm. 105 million pounds to be exact, and they took over a 40% stake in the club, meaning that things are going to be run a little bit differently. With this new cash, Ipswich did not blow it on any expensive transfers. Instead, they invested it into their youth development systems. But for transfers, they took advantage of being the perfect loan destination for players that weren't quite Premier League quality, but certainly good footballers, one of which was Omari Hutchinson, a strong member of the Chelsea loan army and certainly a smooth winger. The second player of this caliber that they brought into the program was Axel Twanzebe. A decent defender at Man United, but he was getting no minutes whatsoever. Soon enough, preseason began and Ipswich Town would have some interesting fixtures. The most interesting being RB Leipzig, Werder Bremen, and Luton Town. Certainly out of their league if you ask me. They first played Luton Town where they took the lead early on, but overall, it was an underwhelming match. It ended in a draw. The story was also very similar when they played against Werder Bremen. But Ipswich would be truly put through their paces against RB Leipzig. Many thought this match wouldn't even be a competition, but to the surprise of many, Ipswich Town, after many tries, were able to put one in the back of the net and came away with a 1-0 win. A great end to the preseason and morale booster heading into the 2023-24 regular season. Most of the championship fans were doubting Ipswich from the get-go. You've got players like Connor Chaplin, yeah. Freddie Ladar, but there's a lot of goals in there. I don't think quite playoffs. I'm going 8th place. The 24th Ipswich Town. Does anybody really think the team sponsored by Ed Sheeran are going to survive the championship? But Ipswich wanted that title push, and to set the stage, they would need to conquer three big teams. Southampton, the favorites to win the league, Leeds United, and West Brom were the main ones. Their season opener against Sunderland went very well as it took only a 2-1 win. And five games in, they were yet to lose until they faced Leeds. From the first whistle, Ipswich had the momentum. Leeds conceded an own goal, but three minutes later made up for their mistake and leveled the squad. In the next 10 minutes, Leeds scored two more goals, making their lead 3-1. Just before the halftime whistle, Ipswich got some momentum going and had Broadhead with a cool finish. When they came back after halftime, Ipswich started to test Leeds' keeper like crazy. However, Leeds picked themselves back up by scoring in the 79th minute and sealing the win. For the next 11 games, Ipswich went undefeated and even went on to beat Southampton, thanks to this goal from Lamar Hutchinson. They then faced West Brom away, and this game was crucial. Ipswich were cruising near the top of the table and a title push was looking more than possible. So beating West Brom would be extremely beneficial for the Tractor Boys. But things did not go as planned for them, as Ipswich had no motivation in this game and nothing was going their way. They had little chances to capitalize on and soon enough, they conceded their second goal at the beginning of the second half. There's not much more to say other than that it was a rubbish performance from Ipswich. At this point, the club were still holding second place behind Leicester City. So fast forward to match day 44, Ipswich had lost to Leeds 4-0 in their second meeting, but had won almost all of their other games leading up to their fixture against Coventry, where beating them would be life or death in terms of this push for automatic promotion. The kickoff whistle was blown and the pressure could be felt throughout the Coventry arena. This match began in the favor of the Tractor Boys with them getting the momentum, and in the 8th minute it fell to Kiefer Moore who put it in the goal for Ipswich to take the lead. But for the greater part of the first half, Coventry were on the forefront and desperately trying to make something happen. As they continued into the second half, the luck of Coventry began to turn. 
and they would finally convert their first chance as soon enough they were level. Ipswich did not like being on the back foot, however, and they kept trying to work it through the sky blue defense. But it didn't take long for them to break through. And thanks to Burgess and his tenacity in front of goal, seeing that Ipswich could take the three points home, Ipswich were saved by the full time whistle, and it all went to the last day for Ipswich to get promoted. The club would face against Huddersfield Town at home, where it was all on the line. From the beginning of the match till the very end, the Tractor Boys came out of the gates running and did not hold back at all. Just look at this momentum graph from Footmob. Their first goal came in the 27th minute where thanks to Burns, Ipswich had the lead. And to sum it up, they did not take their foot off the gas for the rest of the game. Thanks to this goal by Omari Hutchinson, he doubled the lead and made promotion look all that much closer. And at the full time whistle, the stadium erupted. As Ipswich Town had done the impossible, proving everyone wrong and making it back to the Premier League for the first time in 20 years. A historic moment for the club and the fans, and all thanks to a man named Kieran McKenna and a few of his star ballers. And the story of their club and how they got promoted like this will go down in history. So let me know down below, how far do you think they'll get in the Premier League next season? I'd love to see your guys' predictions. And as always, I'll see you guys next week.